where we last left off. Oops. To understand how things got to that point, I really recommend you go back and watch number one in this series if you haven't already. Lesson learned, if it looks like the alternator won't come out with the radiator in, don't try to do it anyways. Ouch. Popping off all these little plastic nubbins here. Or trying to. There we go. Trying not to break any. So we'll see how this goes. This is my dash. 
I think this dash is the coolest dash ever. It needs a little work, but I think it's pretty freaking cool. And I just removed four, well, actually kind of three and a half corner screws here. So this section is now loose. And after I detach the rest of the points on this dash, I'm hoping and lift this up and I can maybe wiggle this down in here so I can lift this dash away and I won't have to disconnect all of my gauges and everything. If it gets too hard, I'll try disconnecting this panel, this, this, and these guys, shoving them back through and then I'll remove the panel. But uh, hopefully I can leave this whole section here and just slide it back in there, set it down somewhere, and call it good. We'll see how that goes. As I'm going along with everything, I'm taking all the parts I remove and zip tying or duct taping them in a little baggie to whatever component I removed it from. Just make it a little easier when it comes time to put everything back together, not to be fishing around trying to figure out what size of screw I need for everything. Alright, this is about to be a turning point here. I was able to slip the dash panel inside. I've got movement. Almost there. I'm just doing a little bit at a time here. What I'm working on right now is I'm removing the heat ducts from the back and the easiest way to do that is to disconnect the little front um, vents and then take the hoses off once I pull them out a little bit, which I'll show you in just a second here. So once you have it pulled out, you can easily access these little screws that are holding these guys on. Ew. The way these hoses fit on is actually pretty clever. What you do is you squish the sides of the rings and then it'll unhook from this little nub here at the top. So, here's a little bag. All the screws, hardware, and the vent itself duct taped to the end of the hose, which I'm tucking up here and out of the way. And by the way, I reuse all of my Ziploc bags, food bags, stuff that things come in, wash them out, I dry them, and then I use them for parts management. So this doesn't cost me a thing except for the cost of duct tape or zip ties. Excuse my inability to draw. Here's what we have going on here. This is my front windshield. This is the nose of the vehicle. There are two very small access panels right here. This is the front. Then this is the dash that I have loosened up and I believe I'm ready to remove. Is a piece of ancient blue upholstery and I have removed every connection that I could find along it. And I am able to slip a crowbar in here and lift it up, so I think it's ready to come out. Underneath it, there's a piece of plywood that goes to here. Here there's a little fiberglass section. Then this is the firewall. Big thick piece of heavy, I presume fire resistant rubber here. And this is the doghouse, or rather a terrible representation of the doghouse. The engine is all up in here. Um, so yeah, the radiator is right about here. So I'm hoping, take this out, take this out, find a way to grab the radiator, lift it straight up here. Let's see how that goes.
Hi guys. I've been making a mess. A big mess. More soon. Oh great. So, good news. Top of the dash is off. Bad news. That looks expensive. Looks like I was pretty right about this being the way to make modifications to the radiator system. Because it looks like this is an access hatch. It's just a really hard to fucking get to access hatch. So, I'm gonna clean up all this shit before I go in so that I don't dump all this into my engine block. What a nasty mess this is. Ancient disintegrating insulation foam. And adhesive. Time to break out my steam machine. Ew, ew, ew. Check that out. That's the same surface as was in my dinette. I'm just using scraps of wood here. It's wild. This metal slot here is there because this panel doesn't reach all the way to the edge here. They cut it wrong and they were using some scrap for it. You can see there's gaps there because this panel just doesn't quite reach. So this little access hatch here is cut on a curve. So this area was just patched with some laminate. Then on this side. Alright, this is just particularly staggering. I just had to pretty much tear this plate out. You can see I bent this metal plate pulling it out. Tried not to, but it had so much gasket material on the back because it was covering this. Now this is about a one inch gap that has been completely filled with this hardcore silicone caulk gasket material that I'm wrestling with. And here's what happened. They were trying to cut the hole for, for this, the um, defrosters for the window. And they cut it too low. So rather than using a new piece of wood, they filled this with gasket sealer and they smacked a piece of metal over it. So I've just spent the last couple hours, I'm just slowly picking the gasket material out so I can move this, this board out of here. Thank <laughs> you. 